Yes, let's move on to Mike. Yes. Um, well, think about this with me. If, fire, if wildfires were left to their own devices, they would consume all the fuel down to the forest floor. So when we artificially terminate the fire, then we need to artificially remove what would have been destroyed by the wildfire itself. It's not that hard. What we have here are decades and decades of tree remains that are just waiting for a spark. Where did most of these sparks come from, though? They come from a failing electrical infrastructure that's been mismanaged and neglected for decades due to this push for renewable energies. There's actually nothing more hostile to our environment right now than the agenda Norma and her party are pushing under this climate change. You want clean power, but you're willing to put up these wind farms, which are nothing more than giant bird blenders. You want to save Bambi and all the creatures on the forest floor, yet we roast them alive through forest mismanagement. I want clean air just like everybody else, but I'm not willing to sacrifice our water and our soil. And that's exactly what this push for electric vehicles is. Nobody factors in the cost of the mining operations it takes to, to exude or exhume the minerals needed for the batteries, for the solar panels we need. It's destroying large parts of our planet in this drive for batteries for electric vehicles. There are other holistic approaches that I think we should be looking at legislatively that don't destroy our water and our soil. Things like hydrogen. Hydrogen, I think, is the next thing we need to focus our attention on because out of the tailpipe of the car comes air and water. So we need to focus on holistic solutions right now because think about it. If you have an electric car and you use it all day, how are you going to charge it? Well, you're going to charge it at night, but at night, your solar panels don't work. So where are you getting the electricity? You're getting it from a gas-powered or natural gas-powered generator at the local utility company. That should tell you everything. taken any step to defend the police. In fact, she was roundly rebuked by all the law enforcement agencies in our area when she issued a statement, actually blaming the deputies in Compton for getting shot in the head, that somehow they were culpable for this by losing the trust of the community because of the, that is not the, the treatment of the brown and the black people in our area, and that somehow they'd all been infiltrated by white supremacists. No, she, she has not defended them. In fact, she's demoralized them. And then with her support of the George Floyd and policing bill, she's actually trying to destroy them because in that bill, they were employee who does a bad job at work and you want them to do better. Do you remove their hours and reduce their paycheck or do you give them more training and more money so that they become better trained? I believe the solution to our community involvement lies with the school resource officers. They are the first line of contact when you're helping a child in need and then you engage their family. You develop a trust level that you can't anywhere else. So I think that that's really what we need to look at. If we're looking at community involvement in law enforcement, the school resource officer is the key. I want to thank all of you guys for participating in the Greater Ontario Business Council 2020 Legislative Forum. This forum has been recorded and will be available on the GOBC website. Thank you to all of our sponsors and to our viewing audience and please get out there and vote. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Peggy. Thanks, Jen. Uh, we do appreciate your controlling this forum today, moderating the best that we could. And um, unfortunately, you know, um, we were trying to set the tone to have a high level educational forum and not have some cross dialogue. And um, we apologize for that happening early on. So once again, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Trilogy Financial, um, chairman of our board, Jeffrey Hackbarth, for allowing us to have this secure platform to do this today. In addition, we'd like to thank the Ontario Montclair School District, SoCal Edison, SoCal Gas, 
International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, um, Local 47, City of Ontario, Kaiser Permanente, Southwest Carpenters, Local 909-951, um, District Council of Iron Workers, Arrowhead Nestle Waters, University of Phoenix, Iron Workers Local 43, uh, Sprinkler Fitters Local 709, Brookfield uh, Residential, and FedEx Ground. So thank you for all of our sponsors for allowing us to put this forward. Uh, thank you all to all of the candidates for presenting today. I'm answering those, some of those very tough questions and Jen said it best, you know, this is a very important election. Uh, we wanna make sure that your votes are counted. So vote early um, and please everybody stay safe wear your mask, wash your hands, and please socially distance. Jennifer, thank you so much for moderating this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, um, will be, has been recorded, will be pushed out onto our website. For all of the viewing participants, our next um, session starts promptly at 11 o'clock and gives you a little bit of time. Make sure you're registered for that independent section. We'll be going over the ballot measures and propositions that are impacting not only locally, but through the state of California. Thank you to all of the candidates. Thank you, Congresswoman.